Once you know the basics of how to propagate uncertainties through simple situations like sums and products and powers, you can finally start putting those together to answer some interesting problems. So just for instance, I have an example here where I have a mass moving in circles at the end of a rigid rod around a rigid axis. Uh, the mass I've measured to have a mass of 2.0 kilograms, plus or minus 0.1 kilograms. The radius of the rod is of the circle is 2.4 meters plus or minus 0.3 meters and the period for one full rotation is 3.0 seconds plus or minus 0.2 seconds. My question, my first question is what is the linear momentum P of the rod, the magnitude of the linear momentum of the rod? And to figure that out I just have to plug through the equations. Now what I'm going to do, I want to know not just the momentum but the uncertainty of the momentum I'm going to start by just calculating P to show how the calculation flows, and then we'll propagate uncertainty through it. So, for example, we start out P, momentum, we know, is equal to mass times velocity, mv. Uh, for, well, mass times speed, really, since I'm doing magnitudes. Uh, so the speed is equal to distance divided by time. The total distance for one full period is the circumference. Circumference divided by time. And the circumference, then, is 2 pi r. Excellent. Okay, so I can start putting this together. 2 pi r is 2 pi times, uh, I said, 2.4 meters, which gives me, when I multiply that out, 2 pi times that 2.4 meters, I get 15.080 meters just to give you the number that I come up with. Uh, I'm not going to plug through calculators in front of you. So that's my circumference. Then the speed I get is going to be that 15.080 meters divided by my time, 3.0 seconds, which gives me, when I divide that out, uh, the speed I come up with is 5.0267, 5.0267 meters per second. Units keep working here, that's good. And then finally, my momentum is equal to mv, mass times the speed, and my mass is 2 kilograms, that's 2.0 kilograms times my speed, 5.0267 meters per second. The number I come up with for momentum then is 10.053. 10.053 kilogram meters per second. Okay, that's the calculation that I've done. Now, how do I propagate uncertainty through that calculation? I'm glad you asked. How do we do that? Well, I go through step by step. In this step, the circumference step, I'm taking an uncertain quantity and multiplying it by a constant. That means that I can propagate uncertainty in the usual way for constants. I just multiply the uncertainty by the same constant. So my uncertainty in the circumference is going to be equal to 2 pi times the uncertainty in my radius. Again, 2 pi has no uncertainty associated with it. That's just a definition of circumference, essentially. And when I multiply that together, my uncertainty in the circumference that I come up with is 1.885. Uh, and the units are the same, meters. So my circumference was this 15.080 plus or minus 1.85. I'm going to keep extra sig figs around the whole time for intermediate steps because that's always a good idea. So that's my uncertainty in circumference. I can then come and say, what's my uncertainty in the speed going to be? Delta V. Well, this is a V is a quotient, circumference divided by time. And so because it's a quotient, I use relative uncertainties instead of absolute uncertainties. Delta V over V equals and because these are independent measurements, clearly there is no, or there, there doesn't seem to be any dependence on my uncertainty in R and my uncertainty in T. And one's a stopwatch, the other is a ruler or something. So these are independent, hopefully random, hopefully normally distributed uncertainties, errors. And so I can add in quadrature. And so this is going to be equal to the square root of delta C over C squared plus delta T over t squared. That's my adding quadrature of relative uncertainties for a quotient. Well this, delta c, I can do a little ratio. I'll go ahead and write it down. Um, I know that 
my relative uncertainty in my circumference is 1.885 meters divided by the circumference was 15.080 meters uh, and that comes out to be uh, my relative uncertainty there is 12.5 percent by the way, this is the same relative uncertainty that I had in the radius. It, was, it had to be. So I've got that. My delta t over t, my relative uncertainty in the time, in the period, is 0 0.2 seconds divided by 3.0 seconds. Again, the units cancel out. And that comes out to be, well, it's two-thirds, but with a shift in the thing, that turns out to be 6.67%. And so that means that my delta V over V is the square root of 12.5% squared plus 6.67% squared. And when I calculate that, my delta V over V, my relative uncertainty in V is 14.167%. And it's about 14.17%. Okay, that's my delta V over E. That's my relative uncertainty in the speed. I could work out the absolute uncertainty, but it turns out my next step is another multiplication. So relative uncertainty is all I need in this step. That means I can come over here, and I can say that for P, oh, that didn't work very well. Uh, it's again a product, and so I'm going to use the same sort of thing. I'm going to say that delta P over P is equal to the square root of delta m over m squared plus delta v over v squared. Putting those together, my delta m over m, I guess I haven't worked that out yet, delta m over m is 0 0.1 kilograms divided by 2.0 kilograms. Once again, the units cancel out, so I end up getting 5%, 0.05. That's handy. And so now I can find out that my delta P over P, my relative uncertainty in the momentum, is the square root of 14.17% squared plus 5% squared. We're going to find that this is pretty close to the original number. Uh, it ends up being 15.87%. Uh, uh, that's extra more digits than I need, obviously, but 15.02%. So, in other words, P then, my, my delta P is equal to 10.053 kilogram meters per second times 0 0.1502 just multiplying that, multiply both sides by P here to find my uncertainty of P. My absolute uncertainty in the momentum winds up being, uh, looks like basically 1.510 kilogram meters per second. At this point, to report my final uncertainty in P, what I want to do is round my absolute uncertainty to one or two sig figs. Since the first digit is a 1, I'm going to round it to 2 sig figs. I'll say that this is approximately 1.5 kilogram meters per second. And then I round off P itself so that the last digit that I keep in the uncertainty matches the last digit that I keep in P. And my final answer then, the grand result of this whole calculation, winds up being that my momentum is equal to... 10.0 kilogram meters per second, plus or minus 1.5 kilogram meters per second. That's my grand final answer for finding the magnitude of the momentum, the linear momentum, of this mass at any given moment. And you can see I just stepped through all the steps to get to this point, stepped through all those pieces, and came up with a nice result. If I wanted to report that as plus or minus 15%, I could do that too. That would work just as well. So that's my linear momentum, and I hope that illustrates how you can take uncertainties and propagate them through a multi-step process. Each step just gets its own uncertainty propagation step. There's some subtleties here, but I'll talk about this later.